Victor Wimbayama and Scoot Henderson, the projected top two picks in next June's NBA draft, are set to meet in Las Vegas in October. Find out here where I got the inside scoop and I'll give you my thoughts on this dream matchup, which is going to have tons of NBA scouts and executives and possibly NBA draft junkies and fans in Las Vegas. Stay tuned. Shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. I know I really appreciate it. This episode is dropping a little bit later because I I wanted to to wait until I had quadruple confirmation on, on this event that is taking place. My name is Rafael Barlow. I am the director of scouting for NBA Big Board. And of course, this is the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, which is your daily NBA draft pat NBA draft podcast. Sorry, I'm rushing a little bit. And I am the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies.com. I'm a one man stop when it comes to NBA draft content. I'm a videographer. I'm a podcaster. I write. I have a a a, a blog on NBA Big Board.com. And I'm sure you've heard the news. If you really, really follow the NBA draft, the news officially, well, let me just be honest. I had broke the story on Sunday night about this matchup between Victor Wimbayama and Scoot Henderson. I, well, maybe I didn't officially, officially break it, but I had mentioned that there has been discussions and I guess the contract was officially signed today. But I had mentioned um, Sunday that there had been discussions about this potential matchup, which will feature their projected top two picks in the 2023 NBA draft, which is Victor Wimbayama and Scoot Henderson. And um, I mean, this is like a dream matchup for people that follow the NBA draft simply because this year and this year is going to be different. There's a chance that the top two picks are not going to play college basketball. There's also a chance that maybe even three of the top five picks or three of the top seven picks would not play college basketball. So the casual college basketball fan may not get a chance to see their favorite players or the top prospects in March Madness and so on. So this matchup is, I mean, it's just perfect in a sense where you get these these two players that the you know, even like the biggest draft fans have not been able to watch live. I mean, they've probably seen highlights of Wimbenyama, but a lot of people haven't really seen full games. So this gives people that follow the draft a, an opportunity to watch two of the, the top prospects in next year's draft compete against each other. Now, I will say that this game is going to end up having a lot of hype, but I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't live up to the hype. I mean, it's not like they are going to really guard each other maybe scoot calls a pick and roll and, and gets to isolation on a 1-5 switch against Wimbayama. I don't expect Victor to play 30 minutes per game I mean this is a friendly matchup so it's not like this is a major game that is going to have implications in in the win and loss column even I don't even think it's going to have a major impact in the draft because, you know, you look at last year, for example, Chet Holmgren and Paolo Bancaro played and throughout the year, Holmgren was consistently in, in most cases ranked ahead of Bancaro and even, even Jabari Smith. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's great for the fans. It's great for executives. It's great for especially the fans of franchises like the Utah Jazz, the Houston Rockets, the Detroit Pistons, Oklahoma City Thunder, those teams that are expected to be in that range, Orlando, maybe Sacramento, those teams are expected to be competing for the top pick, Indiana Pacers maybe. In my opinion, this is going to be their first chance. Well, I shouldn't say in my opinion. This is going to be their first chance, period, to evaluate both players at the same time. And I wrote a little article about it on nbabigboard.com it came out yesterday which is labor day on monday and I, I gave a brief article that this would be when Benyama's first chance to play on u.s soil he does spend his summers at least part of his summers training and working out in dallas and so he is a little bit familiar with the states and uh, i mean it's just going to be a absolute dream matchup and everybody's been hitting me up wondering how me you know little Raphael, this independent 
scout and podcaster was able to break the story and uh, I actually found out about it on Friday. So I found out about it on Friday and I was told that I was going to be the first to know. And I thought about it, you know, should I tweet this out? I was like, no, I wasn't sure. Then on Sunday, I ended up speaking to the source, which is probably the most reliable of reliable sources in the situation. And I had mentioned, I said, hey, you know, this story that you mentioned to me Friday, can, can I break it? And he says, Raphael, do whatever you want with the story. So I'm sitting there, I'm in my car, and I text my wife, who who's an editor, and I'm like, all right, I need to squeeze all this information inside of one tweet and I don't want to run over the character limits. And so she she's an editor. So I, I gave her like a bunch of different drafts. And then we finally put together. And I'm, I'm kind of rushing because I'm like, you know, Shams, Woj, Gavoni. Somebody's going to beat me to the story. And But at the same time, I want to be careful because I don't have the the leeway to be wrong. So I knew that I had to like carefully word it. So, um, you know, it. I wasn't wrong either, either way. And so I ended up letting out the tweet and, and saying that, you know, there's been some discussions, which I found out today that the discussions for this particular event have been going on for months. It's been going on for months and that uh, Ignite even um, made a pitch to recruit Wimbayana, Wimbayama to come play for the Ignite. So any, anyway, I released a tweet Sunday night, then on uh, Monday morning, I released a, a a little brief article on NBABigBoard.com about the potential matchup and the dates. I didn't have the dates, but I knew I knew it was going to happen in the first week, and I knew the the location. So I just kind of made sure that I covered my bases. Um, spoke to, reached out to different people to try to confirm. No, nobody would give me an answer, but I knew like the the top two most important people around this matchup I had confirmation from them so I went ahead and released it and I mean you know it, it's I don't have a major major platform I think I may have like 11,000 or close to 12,000 um, followers on Twitter so I mean it generated somewhat of a buzz amongst the, the people that follow me then today obviously ESPN is the bigger platform they went ahead and and re- released the information basically the same thing I said and my phone has been blowing up for the last few hours whether it's people that are tagging them saying that they should give me my credit or people just kind of figuring out like how how I got it but that's just a little brief story on how I was able to to break at least for me the biggest draft story so far in 2023 Um, but just to get some details the matchup is supposed to take place in Las Vegas I if I'm not mistaken I believe that is going to take place in Henderson Nevada which is right outside of Vegas and at the new arena, I think Dollar Loan Arena, if I'm not mistaken, is the name of it. And it is a new arena that opened up in March, March 22. It is where the Ignite will be playing their home game. So I do believe that it is going to be open to the public. But then again, it could, it could be a close scrimmage. But the, the contract was just finalized and everything was was out today. I will be there. I, I got my ticket uh, I got my ticket on Friday when I found out. So I will be in las vegas from the third through the seventh so i'm looking forward to it i mean this is this is a big event i was actually planning on going to paris to watch Wimbayama's first two games and um and then i was told like this is how i kind of got the info information like basically you know you don't need to spend your money to go to paris when you can watch him play in the states so of course I, i love going to paris i just got married there um uh, almost a year ago. So I plan on going back, but I do plan on spending some significant part of this season in, in Paris, kind of following Wimbayama, scouting him. Luckily, the dollar and the euro are even, so that actually saves me uh, a lot of money. Again, I'm an independent scout. I don't have a big budget to to do this, and I'm, I have this goal of trying to to be the best in this industry and, uh, you know, it, it can be a little bit tough if I'm trying to travel and compete with, with the big dogs that have the big budgets, but I'm going to bet on myself and I'm going to make it happen. All right. That's enough about that. So now I want to talk a little bit more about the matchup and what I expect. But before I get into that, let's talk about Built Bar. You know, Built Bar is 
it's the best. And if you haven't tried the Built Bar Puffs, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There is another new flavor. Are you ready for this? It is the delicious indulgent cookie dough, which is covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. It is a cookie dough flavor. It is the cookie dough chunk puffs. They have a light, chewy texture, real chocolate dough chunks. And of course, they are covered with 100% real chocolate. So all of the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. And if you're like me, I used to try to eat cookie dough when I was a kid. I used to get a stomach ache. You will not get a stomach ache if you eat the Built Bar cookie dough chunks or puffs. The cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. So run to Built.com and snag a box for you and your family. It will be the perfect treat. Or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them for yourself. And like all Built Bars, the new cookie dough chunk puff is again, 100% real chocolate. That means it's healthy, it's tasty. It's chocolate covered cookie dough with a lightly fluffy texture. But once again, it is good for you. And what's so good about this is that Built has all of their bars that are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and it's good for you. How often do you get that combination? So you're gonna love this new cookie dough chunk puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just want a quick bite to eat, it is the perfect protein bar that tastes better than a candy bar, and it's definitely, definitely has less calories, less fat, and less sugar. So again, grab a Built Bar, go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. Once again, Built.com, promo code LOCKED15, on and you will get 15% off. Once again, shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. Even if it's your second listen of the day, we thank you for listening. I'm Rafael Barlow, and I'm here to talk about this exciting event, which I think is going to be something that we're going to see a lot more of going forward. Uh, We saw, for example, even though it doesn't have necessarily NBA draft implications, but we saw the... The matchup between LeBron James or Bronny James's, I think, CBC Basketball Club. They went to France and they played against some of the top French prospects. So I think we're going to start seeing more of these cross nations or international matchups because I think there's a lot of interest behind it. And as far as like this Scoot Henderson and Victor Wimbayama matchup, it's something that we probably never thought we would see. We probably didn't think that we'd get a chance to see these two guys matchup. I mean, they are the headliners of this 2023 NBA draft class that a lot of people think is very, very strong. And, you know, unlike, you know, if it was a typical college basketball path to the NBA, we maybe find a way to see these guys match up. Like, for example, we were able to see Chet and and, um, Paolo Bancaro match up last year. Uh, We didn't get a chance to see them them match up against Jabari, but we, you, you can have these, the potential of these clashes in college basketball but now with there's so many different paths to the nba they're becoming rare so scouts or not scouts but necessarily like agents and teams and the league is going to have to get creative to make these events happen and i think this is just big for the g league period i think the the g league um could, could definitely use a, a bigger buzz even though i think the buzz is big now but i mean they have who i believe is a a potential generational prospect in Scoot Henderson kind of reminds me of Derrick Rose. Steve Francis has this modern day game. I mean, he's strong. He's athletic. He just has all the tools of your your modern point guard. But, you know, like I said, the casual fans probably aren't going to get the opportunity to really watch him. You know, he's not going to be on Big Monday. He's not going to be on the, you know, the, the um, I don't know, the, the, the big classic, State Farm classic. So he's kind of going to be a little bit outside of the radar. Then there's Wimbayama who's going to be playing in France. So again, once you get these two guys match up, I think it's just great for basketball period for, you know, like I said, the casual fans, the G League. It's even going to bring extra exposure to the Metropolitans 92, which is the club that Wimbayama will be playing for this year. Last year, he played for Asvel in the Euro League, but this year he's going to take a I guess it's a step back in competition because the, the Metropolitans are playing in the French domestic league and they're only going to play once a week, which I, I personally think it is 
it makes the most sense. I mean, Wimbayama is 7'5", and um, I don't know how much he weighs, but he, he's obviously thin, and he's going to need time for his body to develop. And I, I don't think it would be a good idea for him to play like a heavy schedule of him playing you know, 25 minutes per game, two times a week for a long season. He's going to need time for his body to develop. So I think bringing him along slowly, putting him where he's just playing in the domestic league, playing once a week, I can only imagine him playing maybe 20 minutes per game, which, you know, of course, some people are going to have their doubts. So people are going to talk about injuries. I mean, he does have a small injury history. I don't think it's anything major. He hasn't had any major injuries, but just nagging injuries. And anytime you have somebody that size, people are going to question their their injuries. So, um, but again, I think he's going to play about 20 minutes per game. I don't think you're going to see crazy stats. I think he's going to show the flashes of why people are so high on him, which is going to lead Scoot being in the discussion. He's already in the discussion to be the number one pick, but I think he's going to have better numbers. He's going to have the ball in his hands a lot more. So I think overall, there's going to be a consistent chatter over who's number one. I mean, it could be, you know, reminiscent of Beasley Rose or I think what was that 2008 or 2007 when it was Odin Durant. Um, another year it was, um, what was it? Uh, Carl Anthony Towns and Jaleel Okafor or Andrew Wiggins and Jabari Parker. So I think it could have that type of debates or, or that type of uh, questions throughout the whole year over who who's the better prospect between the two. So we get a chance to watch these two guys. Again, it's not going to be an official match, but I think it's just good for people that love basketball. So again, October 4th and October 6th, the two teams will play these two matchups, which is, man, I'm excited about it. Like I said, I will be there. If you happen to be there, you happen to be pulling up in Vegas, hit me up, let me know. I can try to meet and, and connect. I imagine it's going to be busy. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just I'm back in Vegas. I'm not a fan of Vegas overall, but I'll be back again. And, um, again, once again, I'm looking forward to it. Well, that wraps up this brief and short episode. Once again, this is Rafael Barlow, NBA draft junkies, the director of scouting for NBA big board. Shout out to each and every person that has made this podcast your first listen of the day. But now I would advise you to check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022. It's an eight-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, plus a betting angle from Lee Sterling of Locked On Bets, all coming in together and combining for one Ultimate NFL Preview. Search for the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Once again, Rafael Barlow and I am out.